Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the podcast Strikes Back. My name is George and you're listening to the best films of 2018 with the boys Connor Hello. and Benny. Hello. Year two of the podcast Strikes Back, done and dusted. Well done, boys. Well done. That was terrible, Benny. That was terrible. I don't want to lose another hand. <laughs> Guys, what a year it's been. Uh, so many episodes. I think we're up to episode, uh, let's see. 182 wow. this, this is crazy so uh you know tradition holds we have to count down our best and worst of the year uh, this is always a fun one because uh we get to see what everyone loved and talk about it uh so we've also got our worst of the year uh which is the bottom five uh and this best of the year will comprise of our top 10 uh so let's not waste any more time and get straight into it Hold up, I've got to crack open a beer. Oh, oh Carla, what, what did you do this for? <laughs> cheers, boys, cheers. Oh, cheers. A little cheers. 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 Cheers, please don't spill anything on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bold choice to cheers Again. over the laptop. Yeah. Well done, mate. Um, so yeah, here we are. <clears throat> Benny, we... do you want to kick things off? I think we always start with Benny for some reason. Sure, I love that. It's a great tradition. Yeah. Um, Number 10. All right, well, let's... Uh, Go with the, the number ten best best of the year. Um, these this top ten list for me. I don't know how you guys do it. This is just um, not necessarily the, the ten greatest films that I've seen this year. Maybe, but they're the ones that have really stuck with me. My my opinions on movies change drastically as the months go by. Yeah, I can really enjoy a movie. I agree. A couple months later, I'll be like, oh yeah, I think I saw that. Um, so these are the ones that are that are just living in my memory right now. It's probably yeah, I'm with you, man. Like my because we did our, our in the middle of the year, we did our best of the year so far, and a couple things have shifted position mm. for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So uh, it, that's that's very natural. It's, it's okay that your list changes. Thank you. I'm here for you. Thank you. That that means a lot to me. <laughs> um, so number ten, this is one I just talked about recently. Um, I saw a couple of weeks ago. Sorry to bother you. Um, this this is a movie again. I did just talk about it recently, and I, I, it's one of those ones I don't want to say too much about in general, but um, it's, it's so just one of those movies that is really already very out there. You can get that from the trailer, and then you go see it, and it's just it's something else entirely. Mm. Um, I love a good surprise. I love, some, like, I love walking into a, a film not knowing anything about it and then mm. just being fucking taken away. Yeah, this is, is probably the ballsiest thing I've seen this year, this movie. It... it is not for everyone. It's probably barely for anyone. I think it'll, it, it has turned off a lot of audiences <coughs> that I've seen in person. But um, it was just tailor made for me. Um, I, I really don't want to say anything about it, to be honest. I'll keep it brief for number 10. Mm. Um, if you see this movie, you've got to see this movie. Yeah, I'm really a, disappointed I missed this one. Yeah, there's a couple movies that I wish that I had seen because mm. I think that they would have made my top 10. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I mentioned this in the, uh, when I did the top five that. I seem to have just like not seen an awful lot of films this year. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, at, with the podcast, we've been mostly focusing on news um, for the majority of it. So it, I, I don't know. It just seems to have passed me by. So when I was looking at my what I had seen and what I still had to see, there were some major titles in there that I was just like, oh, God, I wish I could have. Mm. I, I, like, I just know that they would have gone and got on the top 10. I mean, like, spoiler alert, but I never saw Black Klansman. And I, I have a feeling that might have etched its way into the top 10 just based on what you guys have said. So. Mm. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those ones that I'm really disappointed I've missed it. Uh, I've got to go try and see it this week before it uh, leaves the cinema. Mm. I've actually watched a couple of reviews on it. So I kind of know, not necessarily what happens, but how the film, what what the kind of, I don't want to give anything away, but mm. it, it sounds very Which extremely is intriguing. Um, sorry to bother sorry you. Sorry to bother you. Yeah. Like no, the, the, where it goes, where it goes, I hear it mm. very, very uh, different, different kind of uh, flavor. All right, on to my number 10. My number 10 is the Australian film Upgrade, um, which I th one of the reasons that it's on here, because um, number 10 spot is always a tough one because there's a couple of them that you can just think you can just, just kind of get in there. Um, this one for me was just, uh, and they're purely based on some fucking awesome um, fight choreography and, and scenes. I mean, the the whole premise was really cool as well. I thought some of the acting could have done with a little bit of a, a jump start. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the first, I think it's like 10 or 15 minutes in particular. But having said that, um, that was a movie that really kind of engaged me. And I, I liked the ending. I liked the twist. Um, 
it kind of um, once that that start kind of yeah um, got going, I really enjoyed that film. Yeah, this was definitely an honorable mention for me, and it almost squeezed into my top ten. Yeah, I think I I have very fond memories of watching this film, and I love. I remember very distinctly how the ending wrapped that movie up extremely successfully. The only thing was it it sort of if it had kept up a little more of that pace adrenaline rush that you got in the fight sequence, like it had a lot of downtime in that film. And I feel like they could have maybe packed a little more energy into, into it. And, you know, maybe even sh- shorten that beginning part that you were talking about just before. Yeah. So it almost got in there. It's definitely one to check out uh, for sci-fi fans, uh, yeah. but it just didn't think, quite. Yeah. It's just in there because it's a really cool premise some really good scenes. I just felt like there's some other ones that might have been technically better films, um, but I don't know. This just kind of it's it it stuck out to me. Yep. Yeah, it was a really good time uh, upgrade, but I feel like there were certain parts where its budget showed. Yeah. Not in the production itself, but just in like you said, George, how limited it was in in action and stuff. And I don't think it was anywhere near as good as the trailer, which is always unfortunate. Yeah. The unfortunate side effect of having a ten out of ten trailer. Yeah. Um. So. Mm. Yeah. Georgie, number 10. My number 10 is A Quiet Place. Uh, I think, you know, this was a really, really great 90-minute uh, horror film using w- one of the things that people don't really appreciate in film, which is sound. The sound is so important to complement the image and really make emotional impact. And I think this film played with sound and sound design. Uh, something really appealed to me about it. Uh, I look forward to watching it again. I'm not so keen on them doing a sequel Mm. uh, because I loved the ending of this film. This film was like, the ending was just like ballsy. I was in my seat like, wow. You know, normally you're sort of, normally a film really peters out and then credits roll and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. You know, that's the end of the story. But this one was like, boom, end story. I thought it was very, very effective. Taylor made for you. Taylor made for me. You think there's leave like the 10 cinema. minutes? And then it's yeah, like, yeah, I'm out. It may as well I'm just out. go, you can leave nice, now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, short, sharp ending. And politically just... correct to leave now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think this is just a really, really solid uh, horror film and one of my favorites from the year and a fantastic cinema experience. Yeah. I didn't like this movie much. Yeah, um, you really didn't, but I think yeah. you didn't you like it from on the it more. totally. I think yeah, you I, didn't it, like it from the get go because you had some. You were pretty skeptical of it to begin. I was very with. skeptical. No, I thought it was much better than I expected. No, but the review you were you you were very positive. Well, yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. not as positive as maybe we were, but pretty positive. Completely, yeah. And and now this is just uh, very little to yeah. me at this point. I, I feel like if you watched it though, you'd be like, oh, yeah, because I've yeah. soured on it so much yeah, <laughs> that but, I, it would come around again and be like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's just it, it's. <laughs> It's just a little, uh, little tame for me. I don't know. It feels muted in, in some way, funnily hey. enough. Um, but, um, and yeah, it just mm, doesn't, doesn't work for me entirely. I do like how short and sharp it is though. Um, mm. And the, that, that nail was one of the best running gags of yeah. any movie this year. <laughs> uh, no sequel though, please. Yeah, please. Come on. Come on, Krasinski or whatever your name I'll, is. I'll give you a bit of a spoiler that's higher on my list than <laughs> 10. <laughs> well, I'll get, I'll get back into it again. Number nine. <laughs> number nine. All right, my number nine is uh, Gareth Evans' Apostle, um, as seen on Netflix. Um, oh, crap. Huh? I'm so annoyed I didn't watch this. <laughs> Guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got yeah. so put off of it. I talked to you because I thought from the trailer it looked like gore porn, and mm. I was just so put off of it by that that I never – Took the time to go check it out. You're ignorant. You're ignorant, Connor. You got to give every movie a what chance. Did you just? I what? called you ignorant. Ignorant. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll let that speak for itself, then, shall I? <laughs> yeah. Um, this uh, this is completely different to my last film, but it's similar in a way in that I don't think I've seen a movie in maybe a couple of years that I have had so little of an idea of where it is going to go next. Um, this movie. It defies description, defies description, it defies genre. Um, a lot of people kind of labeled it as a horror. I don't think it was that exactly. Um, that being said, there is some terrifying shit in here. Um, it's definitely not gore porn. Um, I think what little extreme violence there is in it is is justified and kind of amazing. Being Being not an action film directed by one of the greatest working action directors is 
so amazing. It creates this dissonance that is just like these shocking moments come out of nowhere because uh, it's the guy who directed The Raid. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. So it, it just suddenly it'll turn into an A-grade action film when it's just this weird period drama thriller thing. Um, I can't wait to watch this movie again. I, I still don't know what it means or what it's about necessarily, but, but it was a wild ride. I really enjoyed yeah. this one. I am so excited to watch it. I only watched The Raid maybe I think about my, six weeks ago. I think my whole list is going to be you going, I really wish I'd seen yeah. that. Well, we'll see. I've caught up a lot. I've caught up <laughs> okay, a lot, okay, so okay. we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but this is on my to-watch list. I think my next four definitely are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to try and right. not hit the table. My okay. number nine uh, is also a Netflix film. Um, it's uh, Outlaw, Outlaw King. King. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I this I mean this ticks off all the boxes for me. I love those kind of period pieces. I love the medieval, I, I, like Scottish history. I love Chris Pine, um, Dick. Chris Pine, Sorry, love I'm him. Dropping as that well. one in again. I just well, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> Has he got um, anything on Fastbender? Just tell me that. <laughs> um, That's a no. <laughs> well, my boy Fastbender. Um, no, I just I think he he's he's Chris Pine should for all intensive purposes, be that kind of typical, you know, uh, stick him in a lead role. Scott um, Eastwood. Yeah, like kind of actor. But he's not. Like he's, he's actually made the effort to diversify himself to um, kind of get in some roles that I, I wouldn't have originally expected him to be in. Um, and I like I really appreciate it when actors kind of go a little bit out of their comfort zone, or at least it appears that they do, mm. um, and and tackle some different kind of projects. So I was really I, I was really impressed with him on this one. Um, for the movie itself, this was a a, a pretty clean movie um, in terms of uh, I didn't there was no point where I felt like oh this doesn't need to be in here or this is unnecessary. Um, I thought that uh, everything that was in there um, played really well. It will lose a lot of people because of the pacing. It is a little bit more of a um, a slowly paced film with kind of spurts of intense violence and um, kind of war, I guess, war violence. Um, I love a good violence spurt. Yeah, <laughs> spurt violence everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's just uh, it's such a neat, good little film that yeah, I, I think it deserves to be there. Nice, two Netflix films. That's very very exciting. Oh, and there's more. Yeah, but two already. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's, they're near the bottom. There's, there's near more, the bottom. There's more on oh, the other know. list. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they've really covered the spectrum yeah, this year. Let's, let's, all right, I was trying to say something nice. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> don't make me look like an asshole. Yeah. All right, number nine. George. My number nine is Widows. Saw this on Sunday evening. I saw I that heard. you saw that. I'm fucking annoyed. Mm, I'm very mm. happy about that. Uh, a very stark thriller, uh, written by uh, the woman who wrote Gone Flynn. Girl. Yep. And uh, directed by Steve McQueen, who did 12 Years a Slave. And um, shame. 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 Talking about our boy uh, Fassbender. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, Fucking solid, eh? I think just as um, if you like, I I think if you like Gone Girl, you'll like this. It's maybe not as um, funny as as Gone Girl has those more lighter moments, even with... um, uh, like the talk show host and all those scenes, you know, it doesn't have that. It's quite, it's a lot more dour as it were. But it's also not heavy like um, 12 Years a Slave. His last film. Well, yes. <laughs> and, and it's got, it's got that, it's, it hits a really nice fine line between a more commercial Hollywood thriller and an indie, an I indie got, piece. I got the kind of sense that it was very similar to The Town, not only because of the subject matter, but just in the style that I think leads the town, to it all. The Town was bookended by three major heist action sequences which are sort of as i said bookend the film whilst this one really there's so much character involved there's a lot less action than you would would actually think and it's mm. a lot of character study and twists and turns mm. um and there's there's just a brilliant thread of um just kind of gender theory in there that is no way in your face and it's not the thesis of the film but it's just as said it's written by Gillian Flynn who um has fascinating um perspective on this stuff as, mm. as again seen in Gone Girl um and it it's it's just the right amount that I think makes really sets this movie apart from other things in the same genre or yes. other similar films mm. I think that this um this movie attracted me more than and and I'd like to see more films like this just kind of expanding on your point rather than Ghostbusters which is an existing IP that 
you know, me being very cynical, I see a, a studio that's been like, let's just make it with women and get on the current trend of social justice. Did you hear that? <laughs> I just keep touching his leg. I'm okay. Like, I'm not complaining. <laughs> this is the fourth Just let it ride, like, man. Just hell? let it ride. Hey, Benny, what's up? Um, <laughs> But yeah, like it, I'm very cynical about those kinds of films because it just mm. feels like they're jumping on mm. the bandwagon. Whereas this one, there seems to be some kind of reason that that's there. Like it, it's not a movie that seems to be, um, hey, guess what? It's women, and totally. you know, it's just it, you know, it's just women. And they're a great ensemble of women, and they are dynamic, and they are human, mm. and that's the they've word got I was depth. Use. Yeah. Uh, they have flaws, and I think you know. Um, massive shout out to Viola Davis. She's I think amazing. there's one particular scene where I'm just like absolutely blown away by a performance. Mm. Um, Elizabeth Debicki as well. Shout out to the Aussies repping it, <clears throat> repping it, um, and uh, Liam Neeson as well. <sighs> Very cool stuff. Yeah, uh, like well, there was one more. Funny to see him in such a small role. Um, but he it there's it one really scene makes it where he amplifies like i've never really seen him before mm. uh very, very interesting there was somebody i was going to mention and it's completely left my mind um daniel kaluuya oh my shit god daniel kaluuya is on a one two from um get out last year to mm. this this year hell yeah to this guy and also playing the good guy to this a very dark fucking bad, sociopath bad guy if you're yeah. gonna call had a somebody full a bad range, guy because in black panther he was also in the middle he was just a bit he of was, a dick yeah, yeah. yeah he was kind of like he wasn't the dick but he was like a dick yeah exactly and in, in this he is fucking ice cold chilling one of the best yeah. films i've seen oh this year oh my lord there's this one shot where he, the camera's spinning around him let's, and let's not go too it's, it's in the trailer into, this yeah. shot it's okay, a, yeah. a guy like freestyle rapping and and he's like going around him yeah 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 that scene um and that scene is that scene is amazing. just amazing and <laughs> also shout out to Hans zimmer with the score mm. very Hans zimmery very dark knight esque but not with, overbearing not like overbearing he can be sometimes no it's much more atmospheric <laughs> and he does those rhythmic like really tense like really keeps the action going like lots of good builds a little bit of dunkirkness in there yeah i mean i'm really i i'm sort of talking about it so i'm like why is this number nine on my list don't worry don't worry um, Don't worry, we'll talk about it again later. Yeah. Love, uh, yeah, that's my number nine. Let's jump to number eight, Benny. Number eight, mine is uh, the Nicolas Cage vehicle, Mandy. Um, this, <laughs> this, <laughs> so this. I was going to watch this the other day. <laughs> every, everyone has seen the trailer for this movie. No one's seen the movie necessarily. Yeah. Um, this is the, the, the psychotic prog rock psychedelic um, Nicholas Cage with a, a chainsaw spear, chainsaw fight um, movie. It's it's something you have to see to believe. Um, it it left me um, a little uh, nonplussed when I first saw it. I didn't know exactly what to make of it. And a part of that was I do think you have to see this in a cinema, but seeing it with an audience is maybe a bit of a bummer because Nicholas Cage is such a meme at this point. A lot of people watch the movie – um, and it becomes something to kind of laugh at. And I don't think that's what this movie was going for. Like this movie, <laughs> this movie is like, I know it's so ridiculous, but I think taken as, as what it's meant to be, it's such a, like a primal fucking scream of emotion. And it's so over the top and so insane and so ridiculous, but it's so beautiful in its own way. Um, like it's got the most like schlocky B movie violence in it. But um, there are just these scenes of, of Cage doing possibly his best work. And this guy has a long and storied career. Um, the more I talk about it, the more I want to see it again and again. Um, it, it's one of the absolute best looking films of this year. Possibly the best if Spider-Man hadn't come out. Um, and, it, you know, it's got like animated segments in it. It's, it's just maybe something that has to be taken with some, some supplements. I don't know. <laughs> but... Um, it's just an amazing piece of art. Not not the greatest film, not the greatest story of the year, but just something to sit and take in um, mm. and just let wash over you. Absolutely amazing. Mm. I'm very excited to put this on. Yeah. It's been staring at me on my Apple TV. And I'm like, I've got to watch this. <laughs> I'm going to see. got to watch this. But I, yeah. I, could see, I could see a lot of people getting put off by it, so I'm not giving it like a full yeah. recommendation or anything. Yeah. Very art house. Um, my number Grind eight house. is The Death of Stalin. Cool, cool. Great um, film. Which I feel has really flown under the radar this year. Mm. Um, as I, I think a lot of hype earlier, but it's definitely died down a lot. I think it was, I released, in some, it was released in some markets last year even. So mm. it, it's had such a staggered release. Mm. Yeah. It never really had the chance. Mm. 
and um, I mean, this this was always going to be a bit of a um, a less popular film in terms of the subject matter. It's a bunch of British and you know Scottish and Irish actors and American actors, uh, you know, retelling a Russian story in Russia. Um, it's it's just kind of like laying itself out to be criticized before anyone's actually seen it. Um, having said that, actually watching it, I was so wildly impressed with this film. Um, I mean that this film didn't lag or or seem. Um, it was just like, I don't know. Like I'm looking at my top ten, and a lot of them I I I seem to enjoy simply because they are tight and they are they don't waste time or space. Um, and this one is one of those. Like just every every kind of comment from the characters seemed justified and worth it. And and I loved that this was a character piece that just seemed to be so. Um, fun and and it, it does such an amazing job of using that that laser focused satire to to tell this real life story and really capture the the you know, major bullet points of it and yeah. the absurdity of it um, without in any way being mistaken for reality. Mm. But but it, it does such a better job, I feel, than like just some dramatized version of it of really giving you a sense of the, oh, the insanity yeah. of this era. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, just thinking back of it, all I, all I just on loop. Like a little gif in my head. It's just Jason Isaacs thrown oh. off his fucking coat. Oh, so good. good. It's fucking amazing. So he was a, his accent in that film. Mm. He went from a guy who I'd seen in movies to like one of my favorite dudes <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a second. Yeah, I saw this in Berlin um, after uh, it was like in a. I was sort of we were doing a lot of sort of post World War Two museums and stuff, and it was really cool to watch it at that time. Yeah, uh, it's, mm. that the, would have been really. An interesting juxtaposition to the well, tone yeah, of what you were saying. Well, yeah, and that's maybe why it's not in the top 10 because I almost wanted to see more. You know, mm. I think that afternoon I'd watched uh, two documentaries on uh-huh. um, mm. the the Berlin Wall. Mm. Uh, so I was just like ready <laughs> for more. Not enough oh, for you. <laughs> Well, yeah, and uh, you know, I sort of like you know, you actually the ending, you know, how historically not like thematically. Listen, let's not get into it. You know, actually, I'm just not going to get into it. <laughs> All right, well, but why don't you give a us really your number good eight? One, a really Look, good one. Just give us a number eight then. Halloween. Hey. Halloween. Now it's my turn to say I wish I'd seen this. <laughs> uh, have I got any other horror films? Yes, I do. Uh, one of my favorite horror films of the year. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I I don't know. I just well, this one really stuck with me uh, in terms of um, just a more commercial uh, slasher horror film done with sophistication, great cinematography, um, great sound design, fantastic direction, some really memorable character moments, mm-hmm. um, fantastic um, interweaving with the original film mm-hmm. and, and 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 as a two hander for you to go to if you know if a cinema were to put on Halloween and Hall- and Halloween 2018, whatever the fuck this movie's called, mm. uh, that would be a fantastic double feature. And I really believe that. And we're not doing this list, but I reckon we're definitely be in the top five scores of the year. Um, oh, yes. John so Carpenter's good. kind of revisiting his original Halloween score. And as um, we said in the review, he had more layers in this mm. than he normally does. Like normally his themes have a, a bit of not thinness but it's not like Hans Zimmer with millions of layers coming swelling in and out yeah but I felelt this one was more layered cinematic and 2018 very of its time yeah while it's still amazing throwback how he's been able to keep up especially since he's inspired so many modern um, film musicians um, doing kind of that 80s synth thing but he's still keeping up and I think he's still showing them how it's done no doubt yeah no doubt uh, yeah I, I think just a really solid film and I had a fantastic time and I can't really fault it. Yeah, so solid. A definite honorable mention for me, this one. Number um, seven, Benny. My number seven is um, one I'm sure you all didn't see. Uh, Teen Titans go to the movies. Um, it is on my list, to, like genuinely <laughs> on my list because I talked to you about this. It's something yeah. I really want to see. Yeah, uh, you were talking about how you like your movies tight and snappy. Nothing this year comes close to the fucking ADD fever dream that this movie is. Um, just... If there is a joke in this movie that doesn't work, I didn't catch it because they're just rolling like that. Um, as a huge DC fan, um, having to live through years of disappointment with their film output, it's so <laughs> good to see something um, not only live up to expectations and be a great time, but just literally address the fact that they've just been fucking up for so long. <laughs> um, like the entire premise of this film is is how, about how a lot of these movies kind of suck. Um, and it takes on just the entire superhero genre, which is 
kind of the zeitgeist of our time right now. Um, and it does it shockingly eloquently for, for a movie, a Teen Titans Go movie. <laughs> my, um, my impression of this film was that it was entertaining for kids, but really insightful for adults. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And there, I, I probably didn't have as many laugh out loud moments in a cinema other than this movie. Um, also, I think the greatest Stanley cameo um, ever. <laughs> You've mentioned this that. Film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, this is another one that I think I can watch again and again and again. Um, and I'm not a fan of the show. I've watched half a dozen episodes, um, honestly, in preparation for this movie because I wanted to like it even more. Um, didn't turn out to be necessary. Mm. Um, absolutely loved it. And just another shout out to Titans, the live action TV series, which I'm also loving. Yeah. <laughs> Please give me those episodes. Um, <laughs> number seven. Ben, this will be one maybe to your dismay. Um, Red Sparrow, which actually made your bottom five yeah. in the mid year, yeah. only because you were unbelievably hungover for it. Brutally hungover, yeah. <laughs> and the movie was just—it's not a movie that I would want to watch hungover. That's so like slow. it'd be like what, not this is quite the Jennifer as, Lawrence one. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's not quite like watching Tinker Tailor. Soldier Spy <laughs> hungover, but I mean, it's in oh, that kind rough. of. Can you imagine? Okay, oh. so I'll, I'll let you say your piece on this. I'll just quickly say, um, I hated this movie with a passion when I saw it. Um, it it's sat much higher mm. on since then. Like it was just fine, kind of I'm sure. me- thinking about what's been in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, one of the reasons that I really enjoyed this film is that it was so different than how it was um, marketed. And I mean, the way that it was marketed was a bit weird. Um, it was kind of put forward as a, a kind of a sexual thriller, um, and uh, all the the um, kind of media buzz around it was, you know, you get to see Jennifer Lawrence naked, um, which was a re- like when I think back at it, it, was a really kind of odd way to go. <laughs> Works for um, Outlaw King. Well, I mean, like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, although I didn't, I didn't actually hear about that hype until after I had seen the film. <laughs> right. After I got sure. the, the full shot. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Um, have you seen it yet? By the way, I didn't even ask. <laughs> no, no. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, well, well watch it. Um, but what what the movie ended up being was such a an interesting dissection of sex and power, and um, I mean the the plot and the the actual mechanics of the film, which is where I think a lot of people got hung up and where a lot of people do get hung up just in general in um uh in kind of spy films see Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy uh for prime example but um the the it was more the dissection of that that those kind of power dynamics and and the kind of um exploration of sexuality that I thought was so really like just fascinating and the more you thought about it uh the more I kind of got interested by it um and the way it was portrayed and and kind of the stark brutality of the film yeah, I'll give it that that um, it had a unique voice when it comes came to exploring se- sexuality. And there's one scene in particular uh, that really stuck with me in terms of exploring that training. Uh, when in when, the classroom, they, training, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was I, that, that was, very intense scene, extremely that intense. That was kind of the main something one. Something quite interesting, you know, like something I was like, wow, I, I don't think I've. I mean, I've seen things like that before. I've seen strong females before on screen, but you this was these, a different kind of these, this power. This femme fatale trope you see all the time, and this was mm. like yep. the training that goes into that. Is the idea that you can use sexuality as a, as a kind of, um, you know, uh, to get under someone's barriers, whereas she used it as like this fucking hammer, yeah. like this mm. brute force yeah. um, thing, Fuck which I thought you. was really interesting. And mm. then obviously the other ways that it's portrayed throughout the film mm. um, kind of keeps you on your toes. Um, with all the different changes in it. So. I think where the film just, I have no desire to ever watch this bullshit again is in what you were talking about with the mechanics and the plot. It gets so overbearing. And by the end, I'm like, let's get out of here, son. I mean, it's, it's, it's a spy cheeseburger? film. It's a, it's a spy film. And I, like that's always going to be the case. People are just not going to understand it because they're dumb. No, I'm kidding. That's, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, there's a lot to digest. It's not in, that it's those. complicated. It's it's um it's laborious, and they didn't have enough emotion in there to really give you care about Joel Edgerton and these guys. Like Joel Edgerton being popped off halfway through that movie, I wouldn't. Hey, I don't think it was dead, so okay. much that you were meant to care for him per se. I think the, the or just real, any of the characters the, really. The, the it wasn't that you really care about any of the characters really. It was more kind of this morbid fascination. 
So it wasn't that I really connected with the characters. Mm-hmm. It was more that I was just morbidly fascinated by people's intentions. And that's mm-hmm. always the thing that I think draws me to these types of films. Um, and, you know, like spy films and things like that. It's just, it's kind of like human interaction and, and human, like, it's just kind of, you know, going through the motions. Who's out for who? Like, why do people do things? Like, that's what I found interesting about this film. And I think that, um, like I said, the, I, I get that that's where a lot of people get lost in this is that there's a lot to take in just in terms of, um, you know, motivations and and um, and all that, but that's kind of where the interest lies. If yeah. I ever, ever, ever would walk out of a movie, which I wouldn't, I would have done it with this one. Yeah. Um, and I think I would have done that if I was like fresh as a daisy. It was just real boring. Um, but uh, solidly constructed. I should, I, sh- I should have liked it. It's, it's something that should have been made for me. And I love I, Francis Lawrence, the director. I would be really interested to see what you, how you would react to that film if you watched it, as you said, fresh as a daisy. Mm, me too, but uh, unfortunately it's never going to happen. Well, because fuck it. Ship <laughs> a boy sailed. can dream. Yeah. Um, all right, Georgie Boy, let's hear your number seven. Number seven is Black Klansman. What a fantastic film. Um, I, I'm just, I can't wait to watch it again. <laughs> so beautifully shot. Such right, a fantastic story. <laughs> <laughs> he shot your whole. Um, such a fantastic story. A, an amazing examination of, um, you know, race and and what's happened in america um over the past hundred years um and and more uh it's it's really uh, it's it's a it's it references things that happened in 2017 reference things that happened in the 70s it reference mm-hmm. things that happened in the 30s you know this is a very generational film and i think it's a very important film I can't. I, I just think it's so good. The characters are amazing. Um, I, I can't remember Denzel Washington's son is the main actor. I can't remember his name, but he did an amazing job. Hats off to Adam Driver as well. What an amazing actor. Super uh, engaging lead duo. Those two. Oh, what they played off each other so amazingly yeah. well. I think this is just such a watchable fo- film from many different angles. Uh, so if you're not really into social commentary kind of films, there's still a lot in here for you as just like a thriller, a police procedural. It's a really procedural. interesting story. I, yeah. rem- I was so caught up in it that I literally forgot it was a true story and thought it was going to go in a very different direction. Totally. Um, but uh, yeah, really depressingly timeless, mm. I found this movie. But um, very watchable, fantastic, and... Um, super great ending and i'm not just talking about the ending that everyone's talking about which is you know the little segment at the end but i mean just the the the, the whole kind of last i love as the well. last all bit. fantastic oh, yeah so amazing um yeah one of the one of the one of the greats of the year really and also i don't think a lot of people talked about how well they handled the period setting uh flawlessly done mm. flawlessly executed I, I'm once again. I'm, I'm why always this number seven on my list? This should be number two or something. <laughs> Honestly, I encourage everyone to go watch it. This is a really, really fantastic film. Mm. Great bit of Topher Grace as well. Oh, Benny! Oh my goodness. god! Right, um, you see how similar he is to the real dude. Oh no, well? I haven't seen that. Oh my goodness! I could buy that. He. It was on point. He fits that really well. Yeah. That's distressing. That hairdo is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. My number six is um, Searching, starring John Cho. Um, I've been trying to rent this for the past four days. It's available to buy yeah. for twenty four ninety nine mm. on iTunes, but mm. I can't rent it for another like week or something. Bummer. Um, God this, damn it. This, um, so many excuses. This more than anything I've probably seen this year, almost maybe, was... Um, sitting in a theater feeling like the rules were being rewritten. I don't want to oversell this too much. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good movie. But in terms of filmmaking, film language, it felt like revolutionary to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, what it, is a film? What is, <laughs> what is film? Um, no, like, I've, heard, I've heard a lot of people say, just, say, share a similar sentiment. Just the way this movie conveys um, uh, information, um, relationships... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's always tedious in movies when they're just World laborious. Uh, they're just giving information. Like, oh, exposition. Oh, exposition. Exposition, yeah. exposition. Exposition. I've never seen a movie handle exposition so elegantly. Um, I think this this movie starts off with a montage sequence that I think is at least as beautiful and touching and emotional as the start of Up, but wow. um, so much more intricately constructed. Um, so if if you um if you're into that kind of thing like movies being intricate like that it'll just really really get you into it 
Um, and as far as just outside of all of the mechanics of it, which I think are 11 out of 10, just amazing stuff, the actual, the actual you know, murder mystery story that goes on, the, the thriller aspect, I think is so well handled, such a great tale. And um, just like, like those true crime documentaries, you know, on Netflix and stuff, except not 10 hours long, just really keeps you engaged and guessing and um, pays off brilliantly. Um, I, I had such a good time with this movie in the cinema. I was so happy. I, I kind of didn't know what to expect exactly. Um, cause you know, this is the, this format, which is like pretty much invented Untraded. and trademarked by one, um, company, one, um, kind of production place. But, um, yeah, it's the, the unfriended movies, which, uh, most people did have positive things to say about yeah. in terms Inventive. of that. Yeah. In terms of that aspect, but they're, you know, just still kind of like found footage, yeah, pop footage horror it's movies. Yeah. Flick. Whereas this, I think is the fucking modern art. It's got character development. That's what yeah. I've heard. Yeah. 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 I feel like we're under like a heat lamp or something. It is fucking yeah. warm. very warm. <laughs> yeah. I will get a fan. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to go get a fan now? Um, I can go do that. Whilst okay. you talk about your number six. Well, my number six, you're going to want to be here for this. I, I feel like that. Like maybe maybe go next one. <laughs> My number six is American Animals, um, hey. which is a film that you and me saw together, George. Yes, um, at the Sydney Film Festival, um, and I I just kind of this film took me aback so abruptly because um, I don't think I was really expecting anything from it. Mm. Um, but it, it was like this. I don't even know how to describe it. it, it I don't the, know. Sorry, I don't. Sorry to cut you. I don't know how you could be expecting anything from it when the trailer was just like the greatest movie ever made. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that trailer? <laughs> um, it it had. I think when a lot of people will think of this film, they'll think of the gimmick of the film. Yeah. Um, but uh, oh, fucking give me that fan. Um, they'll think of the gimmick of the film, but all I think about is the anxiety that it gave me just because it so effectively portrayed these characters as real human beings with real emotions. And I, I felt like very in over their heads. Yeah. Like that was, there, there's a feeling that we've all had where we've been like, Oh, we fucked up and we're too deep into it to really like, mm. how do we get out of this type mm. thing? And I thought that they, they portray that so, so well. And I like, I just remember like having like my heart palpitations going off. Like it was insane. Yeah, I uh, this is higher on my list, and um, it could have easily been higher on my list as well. Like it's so hard. I've to- seen this movie twice. I am absolutely in love with it. Uh, I think the way it, it it plays with many many different things, including memory. Yeah, you know, how different people remember things. Yeah, Rashomon style, which is one of the really big surprising and interesting aspects I I found in it. Uh, and the way it handles, uh, you know, the hybrid documentary narrative thing that it does. You know, amazing, amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah, the, the 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 talking heads from the people who are actually involved in the heist, um, I thought were um, good enough to sustain an actual film on their own. Sure. Like, I love yeah. the idea of a drama film from a documentary filmmaker. Um, that was that was just and really interesting. Because we went to the the film festival one. The the director before the film started said, you know, the only thing I'll say is like the people they're they're actually. The, like the people or he said something to that effect and it was so weird because it was out of context like we didn't understand the gimmick of the thing yet right. like, I legit thought he meant when you see Morgan Freeman that's meant to be Morgan yeah, Freeman something like that like, yeah. literally that's what I thought yeah <laughs> and I was like that's what, what does that even mean and then as soon as you see that first talking head you're like oh mm. fuck all right yeah i'm on board now bart layton is his name british documentary filmmaker mm. you watched his um the imposter his, yeah. highly recommend this honestly you will this is a this is the best 90 minutes he'll spend probably on earth uh watching imposter <laughs> no up. hyperbole there yeah but uh no uh, honestly i cannot wait for this guy does next i am on board mm, okay. i'm really on board why don't you give us your number six number six okay now you guys got a I might be cheating a bit here. Uh, but I think, number six for me is Haunting of Hill House. So I, I just, I'll 
I cheated as well. You sons of bitches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you give me so much crap for pulling any, know, any shit on these things. And I didn't put this on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure this was going to be on your top 10. I was like, I'm not I literally you said it. last time that I wouldn't put it in my top 10 because it's not a movie, <laughs> but it is my favorite. Anyway. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would only be this guy that would call you up on that kind of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like Ben didn't enjoy oh, hunting. Uh, yeah. Worst of the year, it, number it, one. It, yeah. the it's on my other list. So that's it. Um... <laughs> Oh man, what a what a fantastic film! I'm still trying to find another TV series to watch. I know what a void I'm like, it leaves. Ashley, what do we watch? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Let's watch uh, it again. I've gone and filled it with Scrubs. That's <laughs> great substitute. God, please don't ever <laughs> yeah. say that again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh God, what a you know. I, I think one thing that I've noticed is I like a film more when there's characters i don't care about spectacle i don't care about mm. um all these other elements that you know oh it had amazing action it's really about the characters and i've got to get invested with these characters and this is what this show did amazingly well i've been thinking about it recently i'm like is this even a horror like it's almost like a drama mm. with supernatural horror elements mm. it's the family story that is the heart of this and totally. the horror is just sprinkled in there and it's sprinkled in there so when it comes in i mean the hair standing on the back of my neck just thinking about the the floating guy with the cane mm. that is iconic stuff mm. it's really it's like in my mind ingrained that episode i think is it six or seven that scare like the the really iconic scare <laughs> that's yeah. like that's oh. such a you mean the one in bitch. the car yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, episode oh. nine episode nine. So, when, oh yeah i suppose it would yeah, be yeah. yeah when little lukey goes down the dumbwaiter and ends up in that little, oh, that yeah, little yeah, basement yeah. room oh. Oh. I love yeah, I mean, like, like we know all these here. moments. <laughs> we know all these moments so well. And yeah. It's like you were almost there. I, I don't know. It's mm. it's strange. I mentioned yeah. this before, but the fact that I can name multiple character names from this show is insane to yeah. me. Because I normally walk out of a movie and have no yeah. idea what anyone was called. Yeah, John. That's why I like comic book movies because I already know all the characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I am I hundred percent agree. Love like it, it just needs to be in there. Um sorry, Ben. That's all right. That's all right. I forgive you all because because I, I I and I have mentioned this before. This is my favorite piece of filmmaking this year yeah um just every you don't aspect- get to talk about it. it's not i'm sorry, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, every aspect of it the um the 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 writing the direction the the casting the the you know the, the young old casting the, the yeah. look of it it's it's so flawless there's like maybe one kind of um special effecty looking scene yeah. in the whole thing i think yeah there's and- one sort of cg shot of the house yeah when it's sort of but but you know what? I don't even care. Like mm. it's not one of those things I even picked up on, really. And you you repeatedly, and um, just with absolute no remorse, refer to this as a film. And I don't take you up on it because this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is a film. This mm. is a ten hour film, and it's um it's the best of the year. See, it's a game I'd, changer I'd almost, as well. I almost disagree with calling it a film because I think that it's it's absolutely fine to to have a distinction between a film and a TV series. But I think that what people are doing are kind of expanding like what, what that means. So before, like... They're blurring the even, lines. Yeah, exactly. Like say. 10 years ago, the idea that, that TV was anywhere near where movies oh, was yeah. was just absurd. And then you start getting things like Game of Thrones. Breaking um, Bad. Breaking... Well, I'm not, like, I wouldn't even go so far as to say, say Breaking Bad. Because that, that Breaking True Bad doesn't Detective. have like the... Yeah, True, True Detective. Detective. Like some of the anthology series. Um, things that are just like big budget... Game changes. With big names in them. Um, you know, when you start getting, um, you know, movie actors that are going into TV because that's where the, the real kind of prestige is, that kind of shit. I think that it's fine to call it a TV show and still hold the same regard for it and the prestige for it. I completely don't disagree, but I would have watched this 10 hour thing <laughs> in, in one sitting if, if I'd yeah. had the time. I, I, I think I watched like six the first yeah. time I started I, watching I, I it. I think that there is, there is something nice in that there was a beginning and end to each section. Like I loved the sectionality of this film, but mm. it, like even if you watched all six, you know, front to back, right? Like end to end, I still think that it was nice that they were clearly defined as six different episodes because it 10. just well I'm or like I'm saying if like if he watched six back to front or even the full ten back to front like I mean I just I liked that each one yes. was like a, a, a story in itself and then also how it combined to make an overall arc. But I also like the structure of like episode one to five having its own flavor, episode six having its own flavor, and then mm. episode seven to ten having its own flavor. Yeah, sort of exactly. like two halves with a middle piece in the middle. I don't know. I like those structural things, yeah. and 
Hell, it's it really almost more works. nuanced than a film. Like it, it's almost an insult mm. to call it a film because it's not. It's it's something more than that. Well, I think I think it's interesting because when we say film, we sort of it's got as you said, Colin. It's got like this pedigree over TV, mm-hmm. and, and and that's what it has. It's got that sophistication. It's got that budget. It's got just that level level of precision yeah, that you you don't get. It's using the medium perfectly yeah. of streaming of mm. of TV of of all that. So I think it's a game changer. I honestly think this is going to really influence a, a lot of decisions moving forward in terms of taking a story, executing that story and moving on to the next thing because I'm over this franchise scrub season 11. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. Mm. You know, let's do Haunting of Hill House. Boom. You have, yeah, it. you have 10 episodes. You have one director. This is the story you're telling That's it. A to B. That's um, it. Maniac yeah. is another example of that. Yeah. And I, I, I mentioned this in the review or whenever we talked about it, we didn't do a review. We, we did a little sort of preamble thing. But um, the fact that some episodes were 45 minutes, some episodes were 110. Mm. I really like that. And yeah. I, I love this Netflix format. Sorry. All right. Into ben. the top five. Are you done talking five. about TV, you yeah. bastards? Yeah. Sorry. Um, my number five is A Simple Favor, um, starring Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick. Um, really? Mm. Number five? Yeah. Uh, this movie... Spy took, thriller comedy? No, it's it's uh, it's like a murder mystery. It's it's Gone Girl, but funny. Um, okay. Which maybe sounds like I'm talking down a little bit, but the fact that it's number five speaks for itself, I'm sure. Um, this movie really took me by surprise. Um the trailer was bizarre. Uh, yeah. I remember we sat down and watched it and it was like the darker side of Paul Feig and we were all just like, what, is that e- what does that even mean? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I sat down and 10 minutes in, I'm like, I'm loving the fuck out of this. If this can maintain half of this for the rest of the film, um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> what the Do fuck? me a simple favor, George. <laughs> yeah. um, then, I then I'm so sold. And as far as I'm concerned, it just kept going up. Um, I, I saw this twice in the cinemas. I don't think I did that with anything that wasn't a superhero movie this year. Um, it's one of those ones, you know, you love to watch and then you love to bring other people and watch it with them and kind of see how they like it. You know, being a mystery and a comedy that makes that community aspect work so well with it. Um, Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively give the performances of their career in this goddamn movie. I've never been a Blake Lively fan at all. No particular reason. I don't know why. Um, I liked her in Shallows last year. But um, then this movie comes along and I just think she gives one of those dynamite performances of any one of the whole year. Um, similar to what I was saying with Widows before, there's this really interesting feminist bent to it um, that comes from, uh, the, 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 you know, has that kind of Gillian Flynn flavor to it as well. Um, just you don't see many movies like this that are, you know, just um, well written by women, starring women, um, about women. Um, and that just gives it such a different flavor to most of what is coming out um so is it is there actually that within the story or is it just the circumstances that it is i mean i mean well, know, well, that, well, that's, that, that's that's how you can really feel it being written by women because because it it does kind of without hitting you over the head touch on the ways in which just everything is different um for women, like or the little ways it is different for women than for men, just, you know, living in the world and going through, you know, yeah. you know a crazy story like this. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It, this movie was just tailor made for me. Awesome. And yeah. I, yeah, I couldn't have enjoyed it more. Um, Interesting. It's not one I'd really um, sell to everyone else because, like I said, it's, it's pretty specifically made for me. But um, every, said, everyone, thanks, everyone who has yeah. watched this movie has been like, holy fuck, that was so much better than I expected. Um, my my roommate Lucas saw it, and it was one of his favorite of the year too. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, I fuck loved it. Cool. Yeah, right. Well, there um, you go. Flew under everyone's radar. Right yeah, now. <laughs> I was very surprised. Um, very surprised. My number five was. I almost feel like it should be higher. <laughs> That's the theme. Oh, well, he's making a last minute decision. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, the list is changing. Uh, the list is changing. Uh, yeah, fuck yourself. it. I'm gonna switch it up. I'm oh, gonna damn. switch it up. Fuck you. Um, go. Number four. I'm gonna put as no number five. Number five. Oh, sorry, number five, which was my number four. <laughs> I said don't confuse yourself. I feel it's gonna be number five. <laughs> he saw the number. He said the number. <laughs> Annihilation, ah, um, which is a movie that okay. took me ages to watch, and when I did just this come watched out? it. Oh, February. like at the beginning of the year. Like, <laughs> wow. I'm not kidding. Ages. Um, and I watched it this week. And maybe it's just because it's fresh in my mind. Mm. Fuck, I love this film. Mm. Yeah, dude. Um, it, I mean, for any number of reasons. And I'll, I'll just quickly touch on the point that you made, which was that 
um, there is not, I, I won't say the undertones of, of kind of more, um, you know, women making a film or, or women starring in a film. There was only one, one comment in the entire film mm. that kind of alluded to it. They said it and then it was like, yeah. done. I thought it was one too many, but again, I completely agree. I yeah. love the fact that it was just... This well, movie starred it wasn't what, smashing you over the four head or five it. women, and that was yeah. That's I think it, no I reason. think I agree with you in the sense that it was obviously a little bit on the nose. Mm. But what I really appreciated, or what I really liked, was that it was one and done. Like it wasn't Flew just like by, a yeah. constant theme. And I mean, this is a bit of a, a tangent, but that's one of the things that I didn't necessarily like too much about Wreck It Ralph, which was that like, yeah, we get it. Mm. It's very on the nose. Mm. Whereas this one was just like. We're just women. We're not five women. We're five scientists, and they yeah. just fucking plowed ahead of Wasn't us. Wasn't like girl power. Sweet. <laughs> um, Killer movie. Yeah, I mean, just very much so. haunting. <laughs> in fact, like just really a, a very kind of non uh, non normal film. Yeah, like I think the way it examines the. Um, there's a lot to this film, but one of the themes that comes through is the examination of the beauty and the um, nihilism of nature. Like it, it goes to some really dark places, but you also get these. Inc- I think it's sort of encapsulated in that one image in the in the pool mm. that is um, is em- an empty pool where you get that amazing skeletal figure with the flowers coming out of it, and it's 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 simultaneously very disturbing whilst being incredibly yeah. beautiful. It's kind of Almost, and intriguing. Almost in a roundabout way saying how indifferent nature is to mm. whether you live or die. It's not about whether you live or die. It's about kind of this survival. And that's brought back by the fact that they kind of say that at the ending, there's a, a comment around, you know, it's not that it wanted to harm you or that it wanted anything in particular. It just was. Mm. Um, mm. And it was kind of this beautiful, like, I guess throwback to just evolution and and the way that life is is there's no kind of rhyme or reason it's just fucking push forward it is um so yeah i just i i I really dug this film i'm so glad so fucking creepy oh that bear man that skeleton face bear fucking bear brilliant just mimicking the screams of the dead The, the um the production design in this was absolutely gorgeous yeah Stellar. And very metaphorical. I actually watched a YouTube video a couple of days ago about a guy sort of doing a, a video essay on it and him bringing out a lot of really interesting metaphors and things that I'd, I'd, I'd sort of thought about, but he really explored it. And wow, man, I'm so fucking pumped that you like yeah. this. That I'm is, really excited about I would love to that. do, like, or just to talk about this film for like two hours and just deconstruct all the different aspects to this. That and, ending and, alone has more to be unpacked than most uh, any other movie this year. Yeah. <laughs> the sound design of that orb thing and the, like, mm. it's almost like 8-bit digital. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, it just looked incredible and you know another thing is like how the character oh, no actually no, that's a spoiler i'm you, not gonna get into do it do you know what it reminded me it. of quite a bit and that it's it's a good comparison was arrival yeah 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 i can see even in the sound design yeah of, of, yeah that kind of shit yeah, like i thought that yeah. was really really you know that that is a really good comparison because both of those movies are unfortunately marked as disappointments to me um Really? Arrival because I'd fallen so hard in love with Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve that that nothing could ever make me feel the way like Enemy did the first time I watched it. And this movie, because Alex Garland's last film, uh, Ex Machina, sure. I mark as easily my top five of the past decade. Yeah. Um, so this movie, while I like, I would say loved it, um, just did not get anywhere near that transcendent level that was really... Um, really, something special. Yeah. I, um, think I, I, I have to watch it again because all all that I kind of think about it now is okay. how it's it's not just on a production level. It's not flawless like Ex Machina was. I think Ex Machina is flawless to look at. I don't know how the fuck they made a movie that good looking for what I assume was a relatively low budget. Um, There's a couple this, things in this that kind of make me just think twice. I oh, that's I I I I, I will contest that. Man. I, I just think this movie is, is it's only that last scene with that. It's lathered in CGI the whole way through, yeah. and They're it's not, not bad not, CGI. Not bad CGI, but there, there are it's a there. couple it's of all over. There it. are a couple of scenes in the jungle, and just by the necessity of everything needs to seem different, otherworldly, and there you know that weird bubble effect. Going yeah, on so there's, yeah, the there's, iridescent look. Mm. The iridescent look is fine, but there, like there's just quite clearly 
just a little bit of like the grass and stuff that you can just tell is yeah. very clearly CGI. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and I mean, like it wasn't a bad thing, but it was just it was noticeable. But it wasn't a plus. Yeah. Whereas in like Ex Machina, the yeah. entire design of that film yes, is just like for sure mind blowing. Yeah. So that's I'm I've I've bumped that down to number down. five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I suppose this is Great higher for me. Still. So. There we've we named go. all of your, of the rest of yours. Huh? We've named some of the rest of yours, two, three. Uh, a couple, yeah, <laughs> yeah. a couple. Um, all right, well, what's your number five? Number then? five, Spider-Man Into the spider Virus. Fuck yeah. Interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, this is the only animation film I've got in here. I think this is just an, a, a creator's dream in terms of like... I feel like the animators and the computer, t- the computer generated CGI motherfucking team. I can't even get my words out right now. Mm. I really think they got uh, an opportunity to flex their muscles here. Uh, we get a lot like Secret Life of Pets, the Pixar stuff, the DreamWorks. It's quite homogenized. Yes, they all have a little bit of a distinct thing, but it's pretty similar on the whole. Yeah. If you compare this to this film, this is a different flavor. This is dealing with multiverses. This is dealing with references to ca- characters we've known for many years. There's so many layers to this film. I can't wa- wait to watch it again. Quite possibly my favorite Spider-Man film. I, I can't really believe I'm saying that. Uh, I think amazing, be like, be like amazing top three film. For amazing Spider-Man films, films yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm assuming this is higher on your guys' list. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, yeah, I massive stick, shout out to this film. I stick by my criticism of this film, um, even though it's higher on my list, and I don't think you have really any criticisms of this film. I stick by the my criticism, which is that it is highly um, contextual. So I think that you're going to, in terms of plot and that, it's, its real value is in understanding that world and being involved in, like... <laughs> Spider-Man and Marvel and all that. <laughs> um, but having said that, because I am like neck deep into that world, then I'm I'm so down with it, and it, like just it fucking blew me away. So yeah, I like I will freely admit that I couldn't be more of the target audience for this movie. Um, literally, as just such a huge animation fan, big Spider-Man fan, um, and just generally kind of critical of the, like you said, homogenization of, of modern animation, CGI animation at all, just has that Pixar look, which yeah. is, you know, they animators, animators try and strike out, you know, their, their skills here and there where they can, but um, this really was a chance for them to do something actually different, which um, apart from, you know, maybe the Lego movies, we don't, we just don't see. Yeah. Um, this movie looks like 3D animation at points, 2D animation, uh, stop motion. It's it's just it it's feels wild. like whatever they wanted to do, they were able to. I I they they've um they've trademarked this style of animation because they literally invented it for yep. this movie. Yep. Um, I was recently uh, looking at the the art book for the the design of this film, which um, if anyone wants to buy me a Christmas present, <laughs> um, <laughs> just. Just stunning. Just like they've clearly gotten the most talented and passionate people to just really give everything to this film. Um, I I could I could honestly so easily put this movie in my top ten list on visuals alone, mm. um, and I, I would have. Um, it, it's uh, it's just like but Miles like is a great else. character. That's and it. I know, There's so much more to it. I didn't it know Miles Morales that. before watching this film, and now I know Miles Morales. Me either, and that's me cool. Yeah. You know, I, I think that is a, a testament to the success of this film. Yeah, I'm like I'm a very superficial comics book, book fan. I know names and dates and, and you know costumes and bullshit, but I didn't actually know anything about Miles Morales. I was as shocked as anyone to see that he had more powers than Peter Parker did, um, and I thought that was awesome. And I, I just... It was so much fun getting introduced to his world and his, you know, alternate reality with all these little spins on the Spider-Man stuff we know so well from movie after movie after movie. Um, I don't think I could in all good conscience not say that this is my favorite Spider-Man film. I think it is the best Spider-Man film. Um, it's, it's just something real special. Mm. Yeah, it is a killer film. And I love it when a film delivers on the trailer. Yes. And we hyped the shit out of this this yes. year. Yes, this is possibly the only movie this year that I thought... Like if, like if I did a list of my favorite trailers of the year, that's generally a pretty short list and most movies don't live up to that. This one uh, did both, which is yep. crazy. Yep. So that's my number five. What's number, number four, four? Ben? 
Getting close. Uh-oh, my Getting number close four is one we've already talked about, Steve McQueen's Widows. Um, we don't have to say too much more about it. I just thought this was such an amazingly well-constructed movie. It's not, it's not really unlike anything you've ever seen before. It just outperforms everything similar in every aspect, I think. Uh, just, just Yeah, just take every, every bit of filmmaking, bit of you know, acting, directing, um, scoring, whatever. It's just that cut above everything else all at the same time, which just makes it something so special and, and truly like an amazing, wide, mass appeal, mm. blockbuster style film from an absolute auteur it, um, that unfortunately got completely ignored by, by audiences. Really? Um, so I want to just implore people to fucking watch Widows. It is shit, so man. good. And it, it, it seems like the setup for a really tacky Hollywood film of like, you know, nobody expects this from us the four women like don guns and go out and do the thing. I guess that's what it is cuz cuz we're Same just cliche. We're more yeah. we're more tapped into this stuff than other people so we can easily go like Steve McQueen worth watching without watching a trailer without a second thought. For Absolutely. Sure. Whereas other people yeah might might see something like that and think it's a little more cynical. Um so yeah, if if you're one of those people, forget about it. This one's worth your time. Yeah, completely agree. Mm. Uh, love All it, right. Love it. Number 4 for me um was annihilation. I've switched it out with Haunting of Hill House um, just because I feel like when I think about it, Haunting of Hill House could be anywhere in my top five, like easily. You couldn't wait to get out of here when you were watching that thing. <laughs> oh, my, like it's just like it actually pissed me off that I had to be here. You, with normally, you normally can't wait to get out of here, but yeah. <laughs> even more so. I'm very busy. Well, I'm the only one that actually has to like, you know, drive around the bloody city to get home. <laughs> yeah, the excuses come out. <laughs> oh, Fucking Ben lives like a five minute walk away. And bullshit. I live like there. You live here. <laughs> That's why I always love when you get pissy about the time. I'm just like, you live here. What the fuck are you on about? Yeah, I get pissy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just got to bring in some. Uh, I love it. Backstage. Old shit. Have a bit old, of oh, he's bringing up old shit. <laughs> um, I'm cleaning yeah. up my closet. <laughs> Haunting of Hill House, man. I think that that, like, as you said, Ben, it it, it it's probably one of the best pieces of, I don't know, like just media out there this year, easily. And I don't think we've we've mentioned the patron saint of the show even. Um, for shockingly enough, the boy MF Mike Boom. Flanagan, whose yeah. name we have to drop every episode. Yeah. I'm Adam and Contractual the mandate. People, people need to know. <laughs> um, can we just change the name to the Mike Flanagan podcast? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I reckon we, we get gotta, like we 10, gotta get this, views. We've got to get this guy on the week. show, man. <laughs> got to get him on the show. We've got to get that road unit so we can do Skype. Yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> road. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, hell yeah. I saw a review of that. Apparently, it's fucking killing it. Yeah, looks um, insane. Anyways, George, you're number four. Uh, that's all you wanted to say. Hill I mean, House? we've already yeah, talked about Hill yeah, House. Like, sure. I'm just, I'm, sure. I'm yeah. so. Well, fucking... okay, just quickly, if they do a sequel, what? How do you want them to do it? Not uh, would be anthology, my first, my anthology first thing. style. Absolutely. It would, oh, I mean, it have to be. I, and Fl- Flanagan there's... has come out and said he's. I'm taking this as a promise from a boy Flanagan. They're not revisiting the cranes. Perfect. Not would you, back do to you the think it will maintain the house aspect? Like. Hill House. I don't know what they do because unlike stuff like uh, you know the American Terror Horror or Story American or Horror Story, the the name is so specific. Yeah, um, the, it's like would it be a another haunting in the same the house? The haunting <laughs> of. X. But I almost wish, uh, I, I almost hope that they don't do it in the same house because the one of the great things about that last episode is really how you the finality view. Well, not even the finality really. It was because it wasn't because the. the um, there, I'd say almost the exact opposite in terms of, um, you know, how you view the house and, and okay, and sure, how, sure, yeah. sure, like sure. It, it, it almost kind of seems like yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, from the house, the yeah, exact yeah. opposite yeah, of cool, finality, yeah. like this really kind of longevity. But you yeah, you, yeah. you change how you see the house, and gotcha. then that for me, I think think that if you tried to do that again, you'd you'd start with that changed view of the house, and it'd be a weird kind of how do, how do I kind of get back into that prequel. Anyways, yeah, yeah well, I would, then, I like, would, I would implore them to maintain the integrity that they've they've come this far with, um, and unlike with like Stranger Things, which was you know letting these guys do whatever they want, um, but then it was popular, so like no, just keep doing exactly that. Just be like from Mike Flanagan, the creator of Hill House, something else. Yeah, like that yeah. would be the best. That would be much for better. Sure. Yeah, just market sure. the shit of like leverage Hill House for something. Yeah, new. just make that the as yeah. bigger than the title. It's like <laughs> from the maker of the Haunting of Hill House. What was that yeah. other yeah. movie he did this year? Huh? No, what was the movie he did last year? The Stephen King adaptation, A Gerald's Game. Dude, go. Have you seen that yet? No, no, no. Dude, fucking you, brilliant. Oh man, I can't. I can't wait to hear what you think of that. Okay. 
We've got one of his movies left to watch. We got to get together Which and watch one's that. that. It's his first one. Oh, um, and I really need to watch. What's um, it called? I can't remember. What's the second one? I gave you the Blu-ray. Oculus. Oculus. I really want to dial that in again because yeah. that's oh, yeah, that's a crazy flick. Yeah. Number four, Hereditary. <laughs> um, one of those ones where it just has stuck with me, man. Um, it is. Uh, it it uses a lot of yeah, creepy man. <laughs> Uh, it uses a lot of components that we've seen before, mm. but it adds enough new edge to it mm. and integrates them in a nice melting pot to bring something unique to the table. And the character performances, Tony Collette's performance is like that last scene. Oh Whoa. my God. I'm getting chills about it. Like, y- yes, 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 yes. Yes, I Every, love this shit. Everyone though, Alex Wolf shocked the fuck out of me playing the son. Oh I, like you just mentioned God. that, and my mind just went to him being like, "Mommy, mommy, <laughs> oh fuck this movie!" My oh. God, um, I watched this twice in the cinema, and two of the absolute best cinema experiences of this year or any year. Mm. Um, I watched it with different people each time. So much fun. Um, one of them ended up in tears for the entire last act. <laughs> um, That's it, so good. It was. It's one of those movies that. Um, what, he got an F cinema score? You know, it suffers from hype and from being being different. F cinema score? F oh cinema score. God. The 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 sort the really A twenty four thrives on that shit. They love it, man. They got it for the witch as well. <laughs> um I I um What was the uh, was it what's below an F? Is it F minus, isn't it? Is that one of the scores? It's F. It's F. Cause it did didn't um Mother got an F. F. Oh, okay. I thought there was only like twenty movies that have gotten an F in the last. Yes. Oh wow! So they've gone. Oh <laughs> yeah. shit! Right, right. There we go. Yeah. The witch was bad, but I don't think it deserved an F. Yeah. Let's not get into the yeah. witch. <laughs> let's not do this again. Um. Yeah. Read any review ever about the rich witch, and it will disagree with you. But good um, point. Reviewers are never wrong. <laughs> not all of them. <laughs> um. So this this movie was uh, a similar twist to what I said about widows. You, you know, in doing stuff you've seen before, but doing it better. But like you said, just adding little. Things on top of that, slight little differences that made it so much more shocking and uh, just really cut to the core of you. Memorable I found. as yeah. well. Um, yeah. The you know the the sequence in particular, um, you know, in the in the first third or whatever oh, that man. that that you know anyone who's the seen car. this movie knows oh, what it is. Goodness. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to say that much. Even oh. um, it is like one of the most fucking like uh, inducing things I've ever seen in my life, and just. Uh, just so good to to watch and watch again with audiences and see how they react. Oh, and man. then, yeah, yeah, little Charlie and 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 her presence in that film is just strong, very strong. Good. Anyway, this is your movie. You talk about. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Another scene that stuck with me is the 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 ball. Yeah, you know the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my oh. god! Oh. Oh. I, I think we just need to stop saying scenes. Yeah. But like, if people have seen it, get it. Yeah. I, so I, I, what if I, I say ball? I recently know, watched, and I don't normally do this. Is one of those like. Um, I can't remember the channel's called on YouTube, but it's like ooh, the, the, the top 10 scariest scenes uh, in Hereditary, yeah. which sounds so lame, but revisiting yeah. just 10 of yeah, them yeah, was yeah. So, so amazing because so there's, there's even more. But yeah, just watching those little bits. I uh, love it. Shout out to Ari Aster. This is his first film. In what sanity. The hell? That is mind blowing from the first shot of the movie. You know where it's going into the dollhouse that turns yeah. into the real house? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> amazing stuff. I uh. cannot wait for this guy. If he can keep up. Three quarters of this pedigree. <laughs> yeah. I'm sold on this guy, and yeah. also I'm extremely excited for this Apple Net uh, Apple Netflix Apple A24 collaboration. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is part of A24's um, production repertoire. Exciting, exciting. So, if you haven't seen Hereditary, get get that shit in because yeah, you might hate it like a lot of people clearly did. Um, the I think end. once the dust has settled, maybe now is a better time to go in when totally, you're not expecting. Totally. Don't expect conjuring. Don't expect paranormal activity. <laughs> Don't expect yeah. that. Expect a, a, a more of an art house. Something indie. thoughtful where, where the horror is is stuff that yeah. will live with you, not stuff yes. that jumps out at you. Yeah. Um, although it does that too and does it fucking yeah. well. But it's not like a character study necessarily like The Haunting of Hill House. No. It's not necessarily about the characters. It's more it's about the performances. Speci- it's less specific than that. It's yes. more universal. Yeah, I, um, agree. I mean, the name Heri- Hereditary says yes. it all. Yep. Um, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Love, anyway. It. Love it. Love it. What are we up to? Number, number three, Number ben. three. All right. This is the big boy. Um, I'm surprised. Oh, not really surprised, but uh, this is 
it's kind of the elephant in the room, I guess. Avengers Infinity War. Um, That's my number three as well. Fuck yeah. Um, bum, 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 bum. I mean, this, this is, this is, this is, okay. This is film of the year in terms of what has sparked the most conversation before oh. the film, during after the, the film, film yeah. after the film. And now we've got an end game. Infinity War is the film of the year. It's the event it, of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels like what Star Wars should have been or what Solo really should have been in terms of just like a Star Wars film is coming out. Like this should have been like huge. I think that, you know, that was very much um, what Infinity War had, yeah. which was just this muster behind it. Yeah. I mean, I always say that um, Civil War was a miracle. They shouldn't have been able to get all those moving parts to work. This movie trumps that. You know, tenfold. Uh, yeah, like it is so much bigger with so many moving parts, and it, it, it's just I I think, um, and I don't know. A lot of people criticize this film. I think it's virtually flawless. Um, mm-hmm. What do they criticize? I have no idea. I don't. I actually delve into <laughs> it because I think they yeah. are fucking dumb. <laughs> I don't even want to know. <laughs> I think they're wrong. I don't normally get personal about <laughs> this shit, but this movie. It is. That's the only word I have. It's a miracle. How did they do this? And how do they do it so well? It's so. I saw it six times in the cinema. That's the only thing I've watched that many times was Civil War. Uh, that might have even been five times. So this could be. This could be more. And that's a lot for a two and a half hour a movie. Really cool piece of content that I encourage everyone to go watch is Collider did. Uh, I think it's about two hour long interview with the Russo brothers, mm. and they drop a lot of interesting tidbits about the making of Infinity War from scripting to. Everything, everything about it. TV guys, man. TV yeah. guys. That's how they were able yeah, to pull yeah. this off. Is well, they talk a lot about um, community in, yeah. in that. But what's interesting is they talk about how there was three very distinct drafts of this film. Um, and in draft one, Thanos had a, a voiceover. <laughs> uh, and this was like a f- 300, 400 page script. Like it was a monster. Oh, uh, but they talked about how they that. removed that and, and how going through that draft let them absorb who Thanos was Mm. like explore that character and whilst they didn't use all that voiceover in the film it let them know and understand him Mm. better so that even without that voiceover they can actively convey every part of him Mm. and as a CGI character in a live action setting he is one of the best characters we've seen put to screen this year yeah and I mean, he, I think he is the best. There's something very in different between character, kind of in your head understanding who a character is, and then just like literally writing it down and seeing it there, and and then and like exploring it. Exploring it. it. Yeah. That's like, you know, that's how some people's creative process really works. And so, yeah, and I'm uh, glad they did that because literally that was his movie. I yeah. mean, that was that was it. That was his. And I don't think Endgame is going to be his movie. It well, it shouldn't be. It should. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, and it's perfect when you actually think about it. It's such a perfect way to set it up. Like mm. these 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 movies are have always been, and and I think rightfully so, connected to each other um, in this way. That what what a brilliant way to to kind of leave it off. Like the it, it, it's almost like fuck. I don't even know. It's it, it's almost like Empire in a mm. way that. The it, cliffhanger. The cliffhanger yeah. of it. Yeah, really. Like, you know, we haven't won. Like, there's there's something to be finished. I'm going to be so sad when Endgame comes out because I'm not going to be like, Avengers Infinity <laughs> War Part 3? <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little you more. Know, it's going to be interesting gonna be to see them. Bookended quite a lot. If If they do what I hope they do, I think I'll be interested. If mm. they just, if they let Phase 1 to 3 just be that glorious moment in time and they start again, I will be so psyched. I think they'll have to. I think they have to. This movie is virtually impossible to appraise just as a film because there's so much behind it, so much that goes into it. It, it, You know, So much baggage. 18 other movies before it um, that that you want to have seen um, that that all help make it how special it is. Um, I don't think any other blockbuster has ever um, hit on so many levels for me. Um, even just like the spectrum of emotion contained within this movie is hilarious. It's heartbreaking. Um, it, it's it's um, it's visually, uh, in terms of just the quality of the special effects, the animation is is easily the best of the year. Um, there were uh, prices to pay for that. Black Panther <laughs> being the notable one. Um, since all of Hollywood was tied up doing this, but man, it paid off for this movie. It's yeah. it's glorious. It's stunning. Um, 
I I uh, I just an A in every possible field you could come up with this for this movie. The score I think is amazing. Um, I told you I watched it la- uh, earlier this month or late last month, hmm. and just again just blown away because I mean the the fifth or sixth time you see it in the cinema, it's kind of like okay, this is a long yeah, movie, and maybe sure. this was one too many. Hmm. But um, <laughs> but coming back to it after so long, if not. I mean, like I'm six ready, months. I'm ready. It's such a fucking brilliant thing to do. It feels mm. still feels so fresh. Yeah, so. It, the the strength of this movie for me is every time we cut off to whatever else completely removed from the last thing we're at, I'm like, oh yeah, this is a thing too. Totally, yes. totally. Fuck yes, we're at Doctor Strange now. Totally. Uh, or this bit's coming up. Um, and just special shout out to. I feel the 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 shocking MVP, um, Chris Hemsworth, who gave a performance yeah, that I dude. thought would have been beyond him. Um, dude, 100%. Just him talking to Rocket in that ship. This is Thor's yeah. movie in a lot of ways. Yeah. I know he talks about Thanos. It's Thanos' movie, but a second place is Thor. Yeah, for just, sure. Just just talking about you know you know what what more could I lose? Uh, it, it's it's so understated and so fucking mm. brilliant. And then of and course it really there's... brings it home to you because you you kind of almost forget. Because in each film, you kind of they want to give the character a little bit of development so that he loses something or yeah. he loses someone or something like that. Yeah. And when when you really sum it up over the last well three or four movies for him, you're like, oh yeah, this has like happened in a relatively short period of time that he's lost an incredible amount. Like, oh yeah, that would affect some people. Yeah, pretty yeah. much all he's got left is like Tessa Thompson and Rockman. <laughs> and, and Tessa Thompson is, is just like not mentioned I'm cool at all. Gay. I'm cool. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, and of, of course it just the like the the. The meme ability of this movie, the way it just it just took over the entire world for that. Oh, that the period. oh my god, I got to show you this meme I found <laughs> of Infinity War today. It's so good. I'm actually going to post yeah. it on the podcast tomorrow. Fuck yeah, and, and just, right. just Tom Holland at the end as well. Oh, just got to yeah. mention that. Oh, That's yeah. what an amazing absolute moment. line. How good is that? Really? Yeah, he that was not in the script. Oh, for real. Apparently, like yeah. that was because every he was just meant to do what everyone else did, which was kind of like look. And and, wow, and just stand cool. there, but then he actually disintegrated, and everyone was like, "That was fucking great, wow. Tom." Tom, let's go again. Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom, <laughs> Tom! <laughs> no, <laughs> he's gone. He's it's gone. A little, it's a little known fact that last scene he had to be CGI replaced. Yeah. <laughs> Tarkened. Um, uh, why did you bring that my, shit up? <laughs> my number three is Spider Man. Um, I mean, it was always going to be in the, like the top ten. I think they got desperate enough. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> top, I guess, five for us. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think there's much more to say about this film than we've already said. It's which it's, film was it? Uh, Spider Man. Oh, I'm yeah. um, just like gorgeously animated, um, really a cool story. Um, as I said, my criticism still lies that if if you're not someone that's like fairly intimately um, involved or familiar with Marvel and and with Spider Man in particular, that this film will pass you by in a lot of ways. Like, I mean, there's so many nuances in it that you really like. Half the people out there, I don't even think, will know who Gwen Stacy is. Just, just, um, just as a counter argument, not to get into a fight with you, but just for the lovely people out there, <laughs> I, I, I do completely disagree because I think ev- ev- anyone who has seen one or two Spider-Man movies, of you know, which there are many, and most people probably have, I think you have a, a strong enough basis um, to come at this movie and and get what they're doing, like because. I think it's I, like I, even if you've seen one of the shitty Garfield ones, then Gwen Stacy you get. But I don't think you need to know who Gwen Stacy is. I didn't know who Peter Porker was or fucking Spider Noir. Yeah, so but Peter Porker so, is like a gimmick. Like it's not like Gwen Stacy's kind of one of the interesting things about her is you kind of need to know the backstory of that she was someone that Peter Parker lost early in his life. And, I, I I don't know. I don't think you do. I think because I just yeah, don't, I don't, I don't think I, don't, I, don't I don't think it delves that. into that story. I didn't at know all. that. She, cause it's a, you it's, watched. I know you've it's watched a, the it's movie. I've watched the movie, but it, I didn't. I, and you I wasn't know, privy to that knowledge. You at before. least know that they had a relationship that they were. But together. It's, like, it's a parallel I mean, universe so version of her about, yeah. that, that it's a completely new character, and they tell you everything you need to know about yeah, her. Yeah, I was and actually anyway. kind of like, oh, that was an interesting way. I just, they I, were friends. I mean, part of this is because this is coming from someone that is not involved in this world, um, that had that relayed that to me, and it, that's what got me thinking about it. Um, and so I think I look. I I do think it's completely legitimate to say that, and, it, and that's not to say it's a bad film without that. Like I, I think I need to make that clear as well. I'm not saying that um, if you didn't understand Peter Parker that you couldn't be enamored by the um, by the uh, animation that the jokes uh, or that the the main plot still wasn't interesting. But I think what made this movie like worthy of the top ten or or at, at the very least worthy of top five was that. 
so much of it was ingrained into the the cultural knowledge of Spider-Man and you needed to be tapped into that to really get everything out of this film. Anyways. To get the most out of it, sure. Um, I think the most shocking thing for me about this movie was... What number is this? Uh, three. Three. Um, was uh, how funny it was mm. because I thought the trailers and the you know five-minute segment we saw after Venom were amusing, not laugh out loud funny. I thought this movie was fucking hilarious um, uh, in several parts, especially the post credit scene, which is the, the best, best post credit scene best. I've ever the seen best. attached to a goddamn superhero movie um, and makes me very excited for the future of this Please franchise. Um, yeah, it was Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man 2099. Really? Yeah. How good's that? How fucking exciting is that? Fucking hell, man. More Oscar Isaac. <laughs> Fuck the MCU. <laughs> We're doing this Spider-Verse oh, man. shit. Like, yeah, I, I never thought I'd be like, Sony, you're the, you're the kings yeah, now. You're Sony, my favorite. Sony, you're the kings. Like, I, so my, just, just, just say Sony Animation. <laughs> Sony Animation. And Venom. And Venom. My, Venom. My, There's my, still ah. two spots left. <laughs> hey, I swear to God, if either of you put Venom in your top two, I will... F- <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> to be fair, it's in my top three. <laughs> um, um, it's, yeah, honestly, my, my biggest wish for the MCU at this point would be to introduce Shamik Moore as Miles Morales. This version of Miles, because like, I think with this... Yeah, I was this say, he's a bit old to... <laughs> no, fuck it, this dimensional hopping shit, I think they're set up for it. I think they could do yeah. it. They've got uh, Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy. Yeah. I think that would work gangbusters. Yeah. Um, I, like, this is my favourite part of Marvel right now, after just singing praises of, uh, of Infinity War. Um, just moving forward. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, what a what that's, a killer! That's my number there. three, George. And my number three was Infinity War. Uh, I think we've discussed that at length mm-hmm. just yeah. before. Love that shit. It's real good. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that on the Apple TV. I've already done it in about a week. Where have I? Yeah, I've already oh. done. It. Good bonus features. Uh, I haven't really delved into it. That's yet. That's what I'm really yeah. pumped for. Yeah, Infinity War is going to be the first. Blu-ray that I will have bought this year, <laughs> um, and Spider-Man will be the second. And speaking time. of Spider-Man at second, that's my number two pick. Nice um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which I think I called Enter the Spider-Verse for a long time on this show. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, well, I nothing more to say about this movie except if there are any doubters out there, um, go see it. Yeah, it's on. It's on ninety-eight percent now on Rotten Tomatoes, I think, which is you know not the being all and all, but it's a good indicator. Um, Fuck the two people who gave it negative reviews. Oh, that there's that one the the sanctimonious little fucking twat of a reviewer that. And I would never, I never do the whole. Oh, oh he's just giving a negative review to get clicks. But this dude is definitely giving a negative review just to get clicks, and it you know it worked. I clicked on it. But um, yeah, this this movie deserves to be on the hundred percent that it should be on. Um, just go see it. Fucking yeah. say it. This movie if, needs again, to be successful because I I obviously agree with myself about my criticism. This is your third time breaking this up. I'm well, there was saying, a lady like, if, on if Collider. He, I talked about this about the yeah, lady on yeah. Collider, if and she had, was so obnoxious with her feedback on this film. I found it almost like I was getting irritated and angry by it. Um, not not saying putting you in the same ball, ballpark here, but her same criticism was... Um, it I'm was not too it's esoteric. Bad, it was too esoteric for her. I'm not saying it's her. a bad film because of but that. You're not, your your point notwithstanding, would you say people should, if they feel on the fence about that, should not go and see it? But, but no, no, no. Because I'm saying gonna, everyone should go and see this. Oh, yeah, because I, I, and think, I agree with that. Like, yeah. like, but I don't think it's esoteric enough to say that it doesn't invite you in in a way that... It's still a funny, dr- good, well-produced film. Like, I mean... the. I think that, but it's not like a puzzle box where you need to have like know all this knowledge. Like the more knowledge you know, you'll get a little bit more out hmm. of this. But there is still enough of a, just a general character story. Yeah. I think it's I think it's the difference between whether I would be putting it in my top five or maybe in my honorable <laughs> vent mentions. I'm, like it's it's hard to tell just because I'm I don't I don't exist outside of my cultural kind of uh, what I know. Um, so it's hard to say how I would really feel about it, but I just I feel like that could make the difference between this being my number three and my number like ten. But your your only credentials for watching this movie were having seen all of the mainstream live action. Oh, I, like Spider-Man I, I watched movies. Spider-Man when I was a kid. I had a couple of Spider-Man comics, like Spider-Man. You literally a couple, I bet. Oh yeah, like, like literally any, yeah. anywhere between like five and <laughs> two ten, comics. Yeah. and yeah. Not, no no two issues that were like. Sequential, yeah, yeah. That was like the it same. was. I literally had two, yeah, like and they were nothing to do with each other. And and then and beyond that, like just the the animated show and general interest in Spider Man. Mm. But again, like that's that's more than some people, less than others. 
Um, where are we? Number two. Uh, it's up to me for number two because you've yeah. just done yeah. um, mm-hmm. Spider Man. Mine is a quiet place. Whoa. Oh. Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> I too. I really dug this film. When what? I think back to like I'm, I'm looking through my top ten. <laughs> what are you talking about, Willis? I'm I'm looking back through this and a quiet place just it so clicked with me on so many levels. I thought it was such a tight film, um, such a, a well packaged and delivered film. Um, I thought it hit some really good emotional notes. Um and and ultimately, yeah, I just I didn't really have any criticisms of it at the end of the day. I love the tonal change at the end. I love that nail gag. Um, and I was just I was really, really, really impressed with um, Krasinski's uh, directorial debut. Like I just on you know, so you did a, many you did a stellar job on so many levels, it impressed me. Um, and and just when I look back at that, I don't I don't know why, but just there's some there's something about the simplicity of it. Like there's. There's no reason that movie should have been this good. Mm. In fact, it had every reason to be utterly shit, and it wasn't. So, if it was an episode of The Twilight Zone, I probably would have loved it. I, I just one of the big hangups for me, and I hate to get this specific in terms of like nitpicky stuff, and we've talked about it plenty, but it is just the emotional climax of the movie when Krasinski I'm has his doing, big. I, kn- has I knew his this big, is what you were going to bring has up. Has his big moment, yeah, and it did. And it just you know, it's fine if it works for you. It didn't work at all for me. I was just like, this is dumb, and so that you know, that was kind of a linchpin for the film and the whole thing falls apart uh, there for me. Um, you know, I just, I just think this movie is really solid. That's, um, I mean, yeah. it would not, touch, no, it, it would not t- touch my, my top 10 with a, a 20 foot pole. I, I, I sometimes put on the nitpick hat as well. And it, and it I understand. I don't think you've ever taken it off. <laughs> yeah. I understand how it can, how it can ruin a film probably better than most. Mm. But um, I mean, like that's, that's such a nitpick. Like that's such a. I'm just like, take a swing, man. Take a swing. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I, like I just think that. that uh, yeah. yeah we're honestly, not, we're I reckon if I had seen "Sorry to Bother You," this would have kicked a quiet place out of my top ten. Mm. So this only just edged it in there for me. But I totally agree with you in terms of a solid film. Not not much better than this. Mm. Really fantastic in terms of execution of what the brief was. You can't get much better than this. I th- I think. Yeah. No. I just. Yeah. I th- I think it was. We, we we were just talking about how how appreciative we are of of films that kind of break the mold and 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 for something to do to do this to to have a movie that kind of has so little um, spoken word and is so mm. silent throughout it and and, and it's so little like backstory it, on like yeah. two thousand and seven <laughs> the nukes came down I exactly. remember like, it I, mean, I remember it well. Pacific no, 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 that bullshit. And that's yeah. what I fucking and appreciate that's what about this shit. There's every reason for this movie to have been shit. It's every reason for it to have opened with that. Um, and, and you know, like that, the fact that it did none of that, I was just so fucking yeah. impressed. I, I agree. I agree. Number two for me, Annihilations. Uh, this 20, is, millions. <laughs> 20 millions. 20 millions. 20 millions. <laughs> <laughs> like why couldn't that have been the movie title come on Alex go and get your shit together mate. Uh, yeah I mean we talked about this earlier I, I mean the, I think I think one one it's really strange a piece of criteria for me in this top 10 is like visuals like what visuals stand out like if I think about hereditary there's visuals that really stand out in my mind oh, I yeah. think about <laughs> Annihilation there's visuals that really are like ingrained in my mind and that's what film is it's a lot about sound but it's a, even more about visuals and <laughs> I know it sounds really redundant and but it, it's funny how it really just boils down to that really core basic thing I feel like two seconds ago you were talking to me how the most important thing was about character of course of course um you know, don't, don't, you know, don't, Dude, don't look too much into it. Don't, don't look too much into it. <laughs> don't nitpick. <laughs> but I think you understand the broader brushstroke um, yeah. sentiment here. I love this film. I think it's fantastic. I wish I'd seen it in the cinema. It's, it's uh, I want to go see it in the cinema. My sound sucks. I, do, I, I don't even I do have a sound wonder, bar, Connor. I do. I fucking, <laughs> trust me. I know. Um, I do wonder whether this film would have held up under the, uh, or, or in a big screen. Cause as Ben mentioned, there were some moments where I was like, this feels almost a little bit under budget in terms of um, just that there were certain that were just clearly CGI. I wonder if it had been that big, whether it had been like, ooh, that is very obvious. I think the sound design would have pushed it over because it had some really nice synths and pads and it would be very atmospheric. <laughs> okay, now I am going to nitpick. You can't just say visuals are so important and then be like, 
Sam no, 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 no. I'm not saying visuals are so important. I'm saying a criteria for me in my top 10 yeah. is like, what are those visual moments that stick out to me? Yeah. That's just that's just me and the way I've approached this. Fair, fair so point. that's my number two. Funnily enough, my number one middle of the year was Annihilation and it's dropped to number two. Ooh. So there you What's go. What's edged it out? Let's find out. Oh, find that out right now. Ben, number about one. about 10 minutes. If you, um, I, if, I swear to God. My number one... Is um, uh, the fantastic Eminem song? Um, no, my number one is uh, Hereditary. Um, okay. Which, oh wow. Yeah. Actually, you know what I was going to say is, if you had said Game Night, I was going to run on this table <laughs> and fucking throttle you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Game Game Night's had its fun. Um, that was a joke. That's a solid honorable mention for me. Um, yeah, Hereditary is is um. That's awesome, man. The just the most fucking beautiful uh, cinematic experience of my year, um, both times. Uh, Both times. As, as as you guys know, I've been on the horror bent this year, um, mm. and this is just one of those special ones that comes along. And you know, there's already a lot of hype to it, but but for me, it just it lived right up to that. Um, what you were just saying about visuals that stay with you. Holy fuck, this movie is jammed packed with them, and I can't talk about it with just without just getting chills. Yeah, um, man. this movie, like spe- very specifically. Um, I always say about horror, like uh, my favorite horror movies have that like one great moment. And I think this had a few, but that, but one is very late in the film where, um, young Alex Wolf wakes up in bed. I can't believe we're doing this again. (laughs) And there's, 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 there's just a presence, uh, in the top left of the frame. Oh man. Um, and it's not a jump scare. It's just there. And watching this in a cinema with people around was so gratifying because, not everyone figured not everyone it out. See, not everyone not sees everyone it. It, it out. hangs there for a moment and you just kind of hear like, <gasps> you see gasps yeah. happening and, and people like, it's that moment of pure terror for yeah, people yeah. where you're just like, I, I, I don't think I can keep looking at this yeah, screen right yeah. now. Um, and it, it doesn't even explode. It just kind of peters out. And so there's no release of tension. Yeah. And then the rest of the movie is just like yeah. <gasps> hard to breathe. Yeah. Um, yeah, this 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 is is just one of those ones. Like you're saying, Ari Aster's first film, <laughs> mind blowing, unbelievable. Mind blowing. I I can't wait to follow this guy's career. I yes. know what usually happens when I fall in love with a director is their next movie lets me down big time. Yeah, because exactly they, what it's normally way more commercial or something. No, it's just my expectations. I think. Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what you just mentioned that. Alex that's Garland. what happened with Denis. Sure. That's what happened with Alex Garland. Yeah. yeah. Um. But so, nonetheless, Enemy ar- Arrival, m- big budget change there. Yeah. And same with um, Ex Machina to Annihilation. Yeah. Ex Machina was probably twenty million. Mm. Uh, no, Annihilation was about fifty yeah, million. Yeah. 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 So you're definitely not wrong. And um. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully, um, Ariasta kind of stays with this A twenty four stuff yeah, and just dude. keeps going along. This, lock him along down, A twenty four. Lock him down. Marry, they got that Apple marry money that now. Marry him. Put a they ring on that, it. They got that Apple money. <laughs> so they're doing fine. Yeah. The so, only reason why this is uh, this was number four for me and a little bit higher mm. was, um, and I want to watch it again, but mm. a little bit of a lull in the middle, mm-hmm. but purposeful, I believe, mm. purposefully done. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've seen people criticize this movie for its kind of exposition, which is probably a bit on the nose. Um, it does do the kind of literal, like, you know, finding a letter, explaining things stuff. Didn't bother me at all in my first viewings. And I, I don't think it doesn't, still would. It doesn't come across tropey or cliche or it just seems to integrate with I think, the narrative. I, 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 yeah, I think it's it's like, it's necessary it's wanted yeah. because the movie uh, kind of holds its cards really yeah. close to its chest for the rest of it um i uh, yeah i just honest to god love this fucking and if thing. tony collette doesn't get some kind of nomination like this is a fucking bullshit world man and you all i get is all i get is all i get is you staring at me with that face on your face is one of the lines of the year um and yeah. the scene in the the um a in the aa meeting what's well, not an aa meeting but in the circle Grief. of yeah yeah, yeah. And just, if just, you guys just, say, just, you can say just one words, more to really, scene, that. just one more to really, I think this is a testament to how good this film is. Yeah, all these just moments both we can just one more to really piss Connor off is um, Tony Collette, um, a Tony Collette one. I'll just do this. Um, oh man, uh, that's another one of those fucking images, oh, man. Fuck. Oh, sound, sound design oh, in this movie. <laughs> oh, anyway, that is absolutely my number one film of the year. Yeah, easily. Um, all right, my number one is Infinity War. Cool. Um, Can't and I that. just in my head, there's no way that it couldn't be. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It's just it, like on every scale, it it is it, it's 
this year will be defined by Infinity War. Yeah, I will happily say that. I think it's, what is it, rake in the most money, did it? This year? Surely it would have. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, It it kind of, it has capped off this 18 movie, it's not even like a franchise at this point, it's it's something bigger than that. Well, it's a cinematic universe. Um, It it has, um, you know, brought together more characters than I thought was just, Physically possible. How many fucking characters are in this? Like 30, 20? Oh, fuck. I don't 40? even know. I don't even know. Um, the, this, 75. This, oh, <laughs> I just looked it up. Oh, really? executing 75 this characters. This mm. movie. 75. Seven. No, are, you, are you bullshitting You're, me right yes, now? Yes, absolutely. Fuck you. Um, fuck, you. Had fuck you. Every <laughs> single reason to not work. And I mean, I know I said that about, you know, A Quiet Place and all that. But like this movie, like. Just the, it, the pressure, it, the pressure, the pressure alone. Whereas, yeah. like, a quiet place had like so many avenues that it could have gone down that we should have made it like shit. This one, just like, I, I think it maybe, maybe had one possibility of succeeding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's the end game now. So I don't, I don't think this movie could have been an abject failure. Really? Just with the pedigree no, of everything. Certainly not financially. So, no, no, no. Anything, I, but, but I think it could have been an absolute mixed response. It could have yeah. been a it could have been a Oh yeah. I, w- I, wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go Justice League level level, but the way people received, you know, Age of Ultron, it could have absolutely been right there. But yeah, this sure. movie was like you pretty unanimously loved. Yeah. Um and I, I think it, it is just that good. Yeah. 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 This so, is, yeah, this is mean, as I said before, this is film of the year. Twenty eighteen is defined by Infinity War. Yeah. And I say mm. like I think that I maybe there's other films that I could have put on that were that could have I could have tried to justify, but there's at the end of the day, it's just like I just I don't know how I would have really done it. Like, we collectively know. almost saw this film 15 times in the cinema, <laughs> yeah. Let alone <laughs> subsequent viewings on Blu-ray. That's awesome. I mean, that that really speaks numbers to volumes. Me. Yeah, I was yeah. I was at a friend's house and they 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 chucked it on when it just first got released, um, and it was like a. It was not a great. They they pirated it. It wasn't very good. Uh, no, and I it was. Out it, of it, it was. They had their their motion smoothing on the TV. Did you guys oh, see that? That gross. Tom Cruise. Oh, thank PSA? God, that was great. Um, it, yeah, I re- I had I went. I had this the other night. I went to someone's house. Anyway, and it was. I had to walk out in the first yeah. five minutes. I'm like, I'm gonna go somewhere. Else, yeah, yeah. Guys, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go this. walk somewhere. I can't do this to this movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's well, like I can't more. do it that way. I can't yeah. do it that way. <laughs> good choice, man. Uh, my number one for the year is American Animals. Wow. Uh, American Animals. Um, wow. You psycho. <laughs> um, I've seen it twice this year. I, I just it's absolutely love this film. Mm. I think it um, holds a special place in my heart for, for whatever reason. I had a great time when I saw it at the film festival. I had a great time when I saw it overseas. Um, I think... I think the, the, the genre mashing of the documentary style with the narrative and how successfully that was done when it could have been quite cheesy or cliche or not as masterfully handled. Uh, I think that is really why I love this film. Amazing performances as well. Amazing cinematography, incredible themes, the tension, um, and going to watch Bart Layton's first film, The Imposter, made me even more impressed with this because I know what this guy's capable of. It's got that creepy guy from Dunkirk and the I killing mean, of a sacred deer. That's why it's number one. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I absolutely love this film and I I, I, I don't know. This, this didn't make it into your top ten, did it, Ben? It did not. Did you see it? But we have another list to come. Did you did yeah, you see it? Definitely. If it's, if it's <laughs> I, no, no, I did. Yeah. yeah. Um. It it's it, it was a victim of expectation or praise. I well, mean, you guys once, wouldn't shut up yeah. about it. For once, we had seen something before you had seen yeah. it. No, I but it, it wasn't. Even, a... it, it actually wasn't you guys. It was a couple other friends of mine who um uh it, it was very special to. And I, I no okay. So the thing was, I actually watched it with them for their first time, and their very clear reactions to it during the movie was kind of making me like. It's good. <laughs> yeah, like so, yeah. you can just calm the fuck down. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So fantastic movie. Um, masterclass intention. Um, the the without you know getting too into it, but the the actual depiction of the heist and um, so, oh. the the interaction with the you know the the sole staff member who they're dealing with. Um, that's the that's the thing that really stick with that's me. Yeah, the crux, sure. that was sure. that was amazing. There's a couple of intense, core, man. Yeah. intense core um you know scenes. Yeah, um, that really defined that movie, and that was definitely one of them because they just—it was like they had ripped a curtain mm. open on like all the bullshittery of Hollywood, 
um, in this kind of subtext of like, mm. this is real life. Mm. This isn't some, and then they mm. had, they this had a, a specific scene. This ain't Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> yeah, they, they had a specific scene where they, they kind of imagined what it would be like. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and, and yeah. kind of like shattered this this image of, mm. of the, the heist yeah. film. Yeah. I think also this film has... Uh, so I, human. I watched... Um, I watched a, a Q&A with the director, Bart Layton, and he talked a lot about how in this age of Instagram and everyone wants, everyone wants to be a somebody and these kids in this, they want to be a somebody. Mm. And it's it's kind of if reflective of 2018, um, the genre blending aspect of it as well. It's got that mashup kind of, um, you know, modern, modern vibe to it. So this is my number one of the year. Uh, and I, I encourage everyone to go watch it because I had a, such a good time. The real life people come across as great dudes, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> like I hate to like, yeah. you know, take criminals and yeah. be like, eh, but like, I think that's yeah. like that was the whole in point. the movie. They they're, they're just they're, regular dudes, yeah. Espe- especially the the um the main the real yeah like yeah. the ringleader guy. He is so watchable. Yeah. yeah, I would love to see more you know, of him. Because you know, there's this whole thing, not maybe criminal gangster, but there's this whole thing with the gangster in Hollywood, like this 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 person mm. who's all knowing. Um, you know, well, he knows bad, exactly like what to do. He's to a the badass bone. guy, yeah. and he's got like they're he's so almost smart, like a god. So cool. yeah. He's almost like otherworldly. Like we're gonna, you know, it gives us this kind of like this and this flipped it on his head of what the criminal is. Like I mean, yeah. I think there's been nothing more destructive or not destructive or more misleading about criminals than Hannibal Lecter. Everyone thinks that these psychopaths, like they're all masterminds, like Chianti beans, like shit like that. It's like, that's not what the, like that's not what criminals are like. They're fucking normal people yeah. that get into either like, you know, shitty circumstances or they're, yeah. you know, like. And that's what I loved about this. Yeah. I loved that element of this film. Mm. So yeah, I can't say enough. And I think the fact that we did go in with no expectations was another reason why we loved Huge this plus, so much. Huge plus, yeah. Um, all right. Well, do we have any honorable mentions Here that we, we want do. to go through? Let's yeah, let's yeah. try and keep these ones short. Um, I'll I'll run through a couple of mine. Uh, first of my honorable mentions was like Black Panther. I think that needs to have a shout out just because of the, the cultural impact that it yep. seemed to have had. Like it was just so well timed, and when it came out, I agree. Um, in a movie without in a year without Infinity War, that that movie would have gotten even more yeah um, respect, easily. respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, most definitely. As what? well, another one was uh, Rampage. For me, <laughs> that um, was a just, lot of fun. Because yeah, it was literally that. It was just a lot of fun, um, and I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the movies in my top ten are, are ones that I I found really interesting and and technically well done and like they're good films and all that yes. kind of stuff. Whereas Rampage was one of the more fun popcorn experiences yeah. of this year in and terms a surprise. of surprise and, and in yeah, a movie that genuine was- surprise. Surely going to be terrible, and which in a lot of ways not. was terrible. <laughs> yeah, like it was sure. like, yeah, it was very much a B action film. Yeah. Um. And then last, um, this is a bit of a, a weird one, but I was just really impressed with A Star Is Born. Um. In terms of a movie that I did not think that I would pay too much attention to, um, just the the performances given by Cooper and uh, Lady Gaga were just they're just so impressive that I, I I feel like I have to give it a shout out. Yeah, for sure. Very fair. Nice one. Any uh, honorable mentions for you, um, gentlemen? One for me. I don't know if you're like this, Connor, is Venom. Uh, purely on uh, just I kind of just, it kind of sticks with me and um, I look forward to watching it again. I don't think it would hit my top 10. It's definitely, definitely an honorable mention. Mm. But I had a good time with Venom. Yeah, this is my first honorable mention as well. It's um, It just did enough differently and was just kind of offbeat enough that yeah. it really... It really resonated with me and a lot of people out there. And I, I love that that um, Sony's kind of leaning into that. And hopefully they can... Oh, ooh, <laughs> they can First chill out. drink goes down. <laughs> hopefully they can chill out with a bit of their Sony bullshit and um, take what is working about this yeah. stuff. And Because and, obviously this movie did very well. It's going to continue on. Hopefully they can lean into that more and uh, we can get... They can take out the generic bullshit of the next one. Um, you got any more, George? I have a few more. Um, upgrade. Good fun. Uh, that was we in your top 10, yeah. Connor. Uh, Roma. Uh, I watched that on Netflix. Okay. Alfonso Cuaron's film. Uh, we reviewed the trailer for it. Was it as artsy as I thought it was? No, oh, it, unbelievably artsy. Mm. Okay. Cool. Um, incredibly beautiful. Incredibly beautiful. Mm. Incredibly well handled. Um, I think maybe where it lost me was maybe it is it, the me- meandering... 
the me- meandering nature of the film and the sort of almost fly on the wall watching very everyday circumstances take place mm. is part of the DNA of the film. And in some ways it makes it a little bit at 140 odd minutes. It, mm. it sort of, yeah, you know, it could just, you know, yeah, let's go. That's let's why, go. that's why I haven't watched it to be yeah. honest. It yeah. looks a little, uh, but honestly, uh, an absolutely <laughs> stunning. <laughs> if film. you're saying that I have no chance. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and, and I, I encourage you guys to go watch it. Not yeah, you. I, I'll have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> when I say you guys, I mean, you, Ben, uh, Any other, um, uh, crazy rich Asians. Yeah. I had a really good time Ooh, with that film. Fun, I do want to see that. I very much Honestly, I had such a good time with Crazy Rich Asians. Mm. I just like a bubblegum romantic comedy. That was really fun to go watch. And the audience was in just having a great time. Mm. So, yeah, just want to give that a shout out. Yeah, great year for Henry Golding, the the, the lead um, guy in that. Yeah. Who was also in A Simple Favor. Okay. And he didn't have a lot to do in Crazy Rich Asians, but he was fucking fantastic mm. in... Uh, uh, a simple favor. Interesting. Um, I'll just run through mine quickly. Venom, obviously. Um, mm. Game Night had so much fun. Black Panther was amazing. Uh, you were never was really Game Night this year. Yeah, that was my that was my number one. Did you actually watch? Year. You never really you you were never. Wait, really what the really hell? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Game Night was your number one mid year. Yeah, for the, for the meme, bro. It was for the meme. No, it wasn't. It was. I, I mean, genuinely love that film. No, absolutely, completely. Yeah, yeah. It, it's. I'm I just so had confused. I just had other movies to talk about in my uh, top ten. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It, it's absolutely one of my favorites of the year. I, okay, so this is a good year. My my short list for top ten was twenty two movies long. Okay, so Fuck. I had a lot of work to do. Mm. Um, you were never really here with Joaquin Phoenix. Um, uh, did, did not like. I almost watched not, this the other day. Not mind blowing, but very interesting watch. Uh-huh. Uh, amazing ending. Cool. Um, Halloween. So cool. Ballad nice. of Buster Scruggs, any movie with the Coen Brothers, any year with the Coen Brothers movie is a good year. Yeah, that just, um, I, I, sorry, that should have been in my... Um, uh, no, it didn't mentions. quite make it for me. Totally, yeah. I, yeah, I, I would Not say the, the first two segments are in my top ten, <laughs> definitely. Sure. Um, okay, a, a short film I want to mention we saw at the Sydney Film Festival um, before Ghost Stories. So all three of us were there, I believe. Um, yeah, Thursday that? Night. Um, directed the dog one, directed wasn't it? by yeah, Goncalo Almeida. Yeah, about the what dog. What happened in that? It's like the a, it's, dog. It's about the dog. I, I the don't ghost wanna, dog. I don't want to go into details about it. Never yeah, mind. It's, it's about. It's about. It's about. It's about. It. <laughs> I'm sort of remembering look, this. Just look, look it up. Look it up. It's about. It's about a dog. Um, find it if you can. It's like five minutes long. It's brilliant. It yeah. is the only short film I've I seen this year. I can't even remember it, but I remember how impressed we yeah, were. Very very cool. Um. And, okay, The Haunting of Hill House, which was my favorite piece of filmmaking this year. And uh, my favorite movie this year that I saw that wasn't actually released this year, I think, um, was The Black Coat's Daughter, otherwise known as February. Um, just a horror oh, film. I've heard it's, about it, this. Yeah, it's on, it's on Netflix. Check it out if you can. Um, Connor, you'd hate it. It's very slow. Um, <laughs> I don't mind slow films. I don't <laughs> like laborious films. Connor, you'd hate it. Um, it's, I, it, was, it, it fucking blew me away as this just... Uh, 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 amazing exploration of just grief and loneliness um, told through a very interesting um, horror lens. Nice. Absolutely fucking loved it. Would be my top... I would absolutely put it in my top 10 if I could, but it uh, didn't come out this year. Um, so that's me done. Wow. Sweet. Mm. Man, what a fucking year it's been. Good Honestly, year. Honestly, that's mm. a solid top 10 from everyone. Well done, boys. Boom. Boom. Ah! Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so, like, worried. <laughs> That was really disconcerting. Uh, not a good no good. For people that are just listening to the podcast. No good for me. George decided to, to high five Ben's cast. He he it, offered it, the hand. It was up. a joke. I, I think like, as a joke. He offered the hand. I did not choose that hand. <laughs> anyway, guys, go check out our worst of the year. We're gonna tear into some stuff. It's gonna be fantastic. Oh, it'll be good. <laughs> and we'll be back next week with the weekly movie show. We've got more stuff. 2019 is gonna be a massive year. We're pumped. Boom. Boom, boom. Thank you, Connor. Bye. Thank you, Benny. See ya. Thank you, everyone.